Hello, and welcome to episode 25 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. Yeah, 25. 25. Yes. Sam said it was our quarter of a century. It's our quarter century episode. Weekly episode. (laughs) It's our quarter century episode. Which doesn't really make much sense. Well, yes, it does. It's like if you hit 100 runs in cricket, that's a century. Yeah. So it's our quarter century. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, so that's exciting. Which also means that next week is also a notable anniversary. Next week will be six months. Six months. Yep. Next week will be six months. Thank you for everyone that has hung in there with us. And I hope that you have been enjoying the show. And I hope that you've been sharing the show and telling all your friends and family about it and listening to it everywhere you go, in the grocery store, in your car. And uh, all right, I'm going to stop. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but don't, no, really. Thank you, uh, thank you, everybody that's her. been with us for the entire journey. If you have not, um, I really don't re- recommend starting at our number one episode because you know everybody who starts their first podcast. I mean, we really didn't know what we were doing. So, I mean, I don't think I, anybody who starts a podcast knows what they're doing. Yeah. So, well, episode one is our introductory episode and does tell you a little bit more about who we are as human beings. Um, it's not a very good episode, <laughs> technically speaking. Uh, I just think we're, we've, I think we've grown and we've learned some things and I think we've improved over the last 25 episodes. So, well, I would hope, I yeah. mean, it's 25 hours of rambling recording and rambling and <laughs> yeah. figuring out what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. Oh yeah. In that realm. So. Oh yeah. We can always improve. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, 20, let's see, episode 25, but I think this makes our sixth recipe in our vegan cookbook challenge. That sounds right. If you've been keeping score at home. Yes. Yeah. I believe that's correct. This recipe, this week's recipe. Is not technically from a cookbook. I mean, it is. Part of the recipe is from a cookbook, but I kind of (laughs) worked backwards on this one. I really wanted to make a vegan dragon sushi roll. I scoured our cookbooks. None of them had a recipe for vegan dragon rolls. I, we did have one cookbook that had multiple sushi recipes. Uh, some vegan, some not vegan, but not what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I used the sushi rice recipe out of that, re- that cookbook. And then I kind of branched out from there. So. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, we made uh, vegan dragon rolls. It was so much fun. Really fun. So I've, much fun. I've always wanted to make sushi. We've always wanted to make sushi, and yeah. we've just never gotten around to it. And I just kind of convinced myself that this was the week it was going to happen. And I'm so glad that you did, because yeah. like you said, we've been wanting to try our hand at sushi for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, it just looks so fun. It does, right? and it was fun. Yeah, and Sam totally loves buildable fun. food. I love buildable food. Any food that you build... Oh my gosh, bring it on. Yeah. yeah. Any food that I can put things on top of things and roll things and right. like, yeah. Right. I love it. I love interactive food. <laughs> she does. <laughs> yeah. It's great. So, um, so, all right. So, I got the sushi rice recipe out of a cookbook that we're not exactly sure where we got. I think we, this might be an Ollie's I situation. Do- I do think that's an Ollie's um, purchase. Yes, yes. Because this cookbook is only um, attributed to. Uh, a press company. A publishing company, yeah. not an Salinas author. Press, yeah. yeah. And it's called Japanese Cooking Made Simple, which is kind of an oxymoron because Japanese cooking is anything, anything but. but simple. Yeah. But it does have some really great recipes, not all vegan recipes, mind you, um, but a lot of method. You can learn a lot of method in here. Which is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Which is helpful. So I, I took the sushi rice recipe from this book. Mm-hmm. And it worked out really well. Yeah, it was super tasty sushi rice. It was yeah. just the right consistency and stickiness. And yeah. The seasoning was lovely. And right. Yeah, I thought it worked really, really well. And one thing I learned that I didn't know, the word sushi actually means vinegar rice. That's a new one for me, too. Yeah. That's really cool. I was yep. glad you shared that. Yeah. So apparently sushi just is uh, the method of preparing the rice. That That's you make, so cool. You cook... Um, it's, it's funny because it's almost like a pickling mm-hmm. liquid that you make. You use rice vinegar, uh, sugar, and salt, and you 
cook it until the until the sugar and salt has dissolved dissolved and then you let it cool and then after your rice is cooked you 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 mix this in very gently because you don't want to break the granules of the sushi rice up and release starch which is funny because you would think it wouldn't matter if you release starch in sushi rice because starch would make it stickier Maybe you don't want it super sticky. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. More research is required. No, but I'm telling you, I watched a lot of videos about sushi rice. Some people are really serious about their sushi rice. I mean, well, sure, super serious. You know, like to the point where it's almost like they're washing each individual grain of rice. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're a sushi chef, you're going to be serious about your sushi sushi rice. Yeah. Um. And I did. I washed. I got a good organic sushi rice. And then I rinsed it very gently, uh, like three or four times Mm -hmm. until the water wasn't as cloudy. Then uh, you let it soak in uh, cold water before you even begin cooking it for 30 minutes. You let it soak in cold water. Mm -hmm. Then you cook it. So you, um, like regular rice, you bring it to a boil. Uh, then reduce the heat to simmer covered, you know, in a tightly covered pot and cook it for like, um, I think it was 20 minutes. And then you take it off the heat and let it, don't open it, don't lift the lid. Right. Let it sit for another 10 minutes in steam. Mm-hmm. And it came out, I think, pretty good. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So it then really you need, uh, what you need is like a large uh, dish. Uh, and sushi chefs will have like, it's like a large wooden bowl, a uh, shallow wooden bowl with like four inch sides. Mm-hmm. And you put the rice in that bowl and you use the little paddle and you kind of scoop and flip and scoop and flip very gently not to break the grains and stuff. And while you're doing that, um, you're not only cooling the rice, you're adding in, you're sprinkling in your vinegar mixture. Yes. And so that then you want, you know, you want the rice to be cool, not cold, but, right. but cool before you start rolling your roll. Yes. Okay. Because you so, need to be able to handle the rice. Yeah, you have to be able to handle the rice. Yeah. Um, and I think it's also a textural thing. The rice has to be a specific kind of texture. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know if you've had a dragon roll, but usually in a dragon roll, there is some sort of crispy tempura element mm-hmm. in the middle. And so I chose to do a tempura and sweet potato. Awesome. Now, I got the tempura recipe from the Viet Vegans blog. If you're not familiar with Lisa Lee from the Viet, Viet Vegans, she's a uh, Canadian from the Hamilton area uh, and has the most wonderful food blog and an awesome YouTube channel. So check her out. Check definitely. Her out. She's yep. got all kinds of great recipes on her blog. Um, so I used her tempura recipe and it was perfect. It is perfect. Yes. Um, you know, I, I had nothing to do with tempura in the sweet potatoes, but I very <laughs> happily ate the tempura sweet potatoes <laughs> and it was a perfect tempura batter. Not only that, but we took, uh, we had some leftover sweet potato from our sushi adventure yesterday. And so this evening for dinner, yeah. um, we popped the remainder of the tempura, um, Sweet potato Uh in our air fryer. Yeah, I just wanted to see if that would work. And oh, did it ever. Yeah, it super worked. It turned them into kind of like tempura fries. It was, they were really crispy. Yeah. Yeah, it was almost like a tempura sweet potato fry. Yeah. Really good. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I had these leftovers and usually like leftover tempura. I'm like, "Mm, this isn't going to be good tomorrow. But it was. But I had this thought. I'm like, ding. What if we try putting it in the air fryer and see if it'll crisp back up? And it did. And it did. In a big and I way. just put it in at like um I heated it to four hundred degrees, so hot, mm-hmm. but was but only put them in for like five minutes. Right. And they came out really good. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was great. It it loses that light it lost that kind of fluffy light tempura feeling. Yeah. A little bit. But I think every tempura I've ever had as leftovers, yeah. That's true. Yeah. You lose the, that kind of airy. Yeah, the the breading doesn't retain its light, airy crispiness. Yeah, overnight and they were crisp, but they weren't. I don't know. It's just a different texture. It, yeah. it changed the texture, maybe just because it cooked the tempura pura, uh, batter more. Yeah, I don't know. It's entirely. Possible. I don't know the science behind it. Me either. <laughs> but I was glad we didn't have to waste the leftovers. Oh no! And I was very happy to have tempura sweet potato twice in a row. Yeah, two nights in a row. Yeah. Bring it so on. this is a great uh, and simple, like five ingredient recipe uh, from 
the Viet Vegan uh, for tempura batter. Tempura batter usually has egg. So this is a vegan tempura batter. And it's just uh, flour, uh, regular flour, um, just like an all-purpose flour, rice flour, um, cornstarch, and uh, I think there was a teaspoon of baking powder. And, and sparkling water. Sparkling water. That's what gives you the bubbly flight, flight? The bubbly, light, fluffy aspect. Well, you know, fluffy, light, flight. <laughs> yeah, so then you can take any, and she, I think Lisa actually says on her blog, then just take any freaking vegetable you want. <laughs> <laughs> She's so funny. And dip it in there and tempura it. Yeah. And you really can take any kind of vegetable you want. Um, and uh, you just heat your oil to 350 Fahrenheit and cook it. It's not going to get like golden brown. You're not doing like a, like a, it's not like a beer batter kind of thing where you're right. going to see it get golden brown. It's lighter. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't cook it super long. But as long as you're, oil, you know, keep your eye on your oil temperature, mm-hmm. make sure it doesn't dip below 350. Right. Or doesn't climb too high. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, because then it's cooking before your vegetable inside is cooked. Before your vegetable is cooked, yes. So, yeah, I think that was a success. Oh, absolutely. So then for the method, I reached out to YouTube. (laughs) So, like I said, this is like a three-pronged... This is a very well-researched recipe challenge. I mean, mean, it's sushi. I didn't want to just like... I didn't want it to be... A disaster, you know, because of it course. could turn into a big disaster. Well, just about anything could turn into a big disaster. <laughs> yeah. So um, I reached out to YouTube and I happened upon a gentleman by the name of Will Young. That's Y-E-U-N-G. And he has a YouTube channel. It's called Young Man Cooking. And uh, he does a lot of he's not solely vegan, but he has a lot of vegan recipes on his YouTube channel. He's also written uh, vegan ramen cookbooks and yeah. Um, And so I watched his method and it was uh, really informative. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, informative enough that she was able to To teach you, teach me. Yeah. I did not see the video. So no. So she was solely relying on my knowledge. I was solely relying on Christine's (laughs) knowledge of sushi rolling. (laughs) Right. That I got from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. They worked. Yeah. Um, I did watch another another guy, uh, TLC Vegan, who also, also has a YouTube channel. And I uh, watched his video uh, mainly because um, in the blurb, you know, the little um, notes, show notes under his video, it said this was the first time he had ever made it. So I'm like, oh, well, this is good. I want to see how a beginner yeah. tackles it. Right? Totally. And so his his video also helped because it's like, okay, he's never done it before. And he's doing it. So, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it was so much fun. It was. It, it was really so was. Fun. And I've always wanted to make, we've always wanted to make sushi. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why we just never got around to it. I think a little part of me was a little fr- afraid to make it, you know? Don't fear the sushi. <laughs> Where's Blue Oyster Cult when we need them? Don't, <laughs> don't fear, fear the, the sushi. sushi. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think. Because I realize, because you realize it, it does take a lot of preparation with the rice and all that stuff. I don't want to spend all that time and then have like some disaster happen. Completely but, understandable. Yeah. But you have to take the risk. Yeah. So we did. And it really turned out well. Yes, it did. It turned out beautifully. Yeah. We each made two rolls. Yes. I was full. Uh, yes, I was full as well. Um, although my second roll technically wasn't a dragon roll because uh, I got so excited that I made some mistakes. <laughs> she, yeah. She, I'm like, oops, you forgot to flip. I, I forgot to flip. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to flip my nori that had my sushi rice yeah. uh, tamped on the outside. Right. Of because it. a dragon roll is an inside out roll. Right. So you put the rice on the nori and then you very gently flip, flip it over. The nori. So that the rice is on the outside. Yes. And then you fill and roll. Yeah. And I didn't Sam do got that. so excited that she just rolled. I just rolled. And then started cutting. And I'm like, hey, wait, you forgot your avocado. I forgot my avocado. <laughs> I, it was a mess. But the thing is, I did find that I personally got a much tighter roll on oh, sure. uh, the right side in roll. Sure. Because you don't have the rice in, on the outside kind of. Yeah. Kind of sticking. In, and yeah. it just so... As much as I love the the look of a dragon roll, yeah. Like next time we make sushi, I'm going You're just going to do a regular. In. I'm just going to do rice in yeah. because I was able to make them, you know, tighter and they were more easily sliceable. They held together better. Yeah, I just think it's a it's a different flavor because you're getting more nori flavor 
right off the bat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I know what so, you mean. And it's a different... I, I love that. So. Yeah. So I was really pleased with how this turned out. Yes. It was a really fun project. And I'm so glad that you picked this week to yeah. have us do that. And if any of you out there have um, made sushi, I'd like to hear what your experiences were or what sushi rolls you like to make. Yeah. What are your favorite vegan sushi roll yeah. filling combinations cause... also you know what i'd also like to hear people's sauce recommendations mm. if you make sushi and you have like go-to sauces that you make drop me a, an email at compassion and cucumbers at gmail gmail.com and let me know what sauces you use to dip your sushis in yeah yeah because we just use i think we just use tamari uh you had tamari i had coconut aminos coconut aminos yeah yeah I kept that simple because I spent so much time making the Well, yeah, suffer. there was there was no need for a sauce. Yeah. I mean, even when we eat dragon roll out, we... Don't f- often dip. Yeah, sometimes in soy, but... But not all that often. They're flavorful so... enough and yes. with the avocado on the outside. They're creamy uh, enough that you really so don't need a, a sauce. No, you really yeah. don't. Um, but yeah, it worked. It worked just beautifully, but... Yeah, so we're now thinking that we're probably going to do homemade sushi about once a month. And so we'd love to know what your favorite vegetable combinations are. I was thinking today that, you know, a tempura sesame tofu with vegetables would be great. That I'm would be good. Also looking forward to tempura broccoli and tempura cauliflower, which I think are two of the best things ever. And of course, tempura zucchini. Oh, yeah, that'd be good too. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah it would. see. I'm getting excited about this. Just thinking of all the lovely tempura vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a Japanese restaurant near us. And um, when we go, we usually, this is what we usually get is the vegetarian dragon roll. Yep. And um, tempura vegetables on the side. Because mm-hmm. they do like a, just a tempura vegetable dish yep. with, that has various vegetables that have been yeah. tempura. Lovely. Oh, and I also usually get... Um, What's that tofu I get? The agadashi tofu. Agadashi tofu, which is like, it's so like silky and creamy inside. Got this little light, crispy outside and super silky and creamy on the inside. It's good. It's really good stuff. Yeah. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, I enjoy Japanese cooking. Oh, Japanese so do I. Food. It's, it's way up there for yeah. me. It's one of my favorites. Yep. So that was this week's recipe. Recipe number six in yes. our cookbook challenge and this co- I'm, I'm really happy that we're doing this is it's totally inspiring me in the kitchen it's amazing it really is amazing to see how excited christine has been getting about cooking yeah again um you know like anybody we can get into just kind of ruts or yeah, cycles get into of, a cycle and stuff. of what we're eating yeah not that that's necessarily a bad thing it just kind of happens and um it's just been really, really fun watching you get excited about cooking and get excited about looking for recipes in cookbooks. Yeah. And because that's usually not your MO. Yeah. It's been fun. So it's yeah. just really cool to see. Yeah. So it's definitely doing exactly what I was hoping it would do, you know, getting me excited and getting me using all the cookbooks that we have so that they're not mm-hmm. just sitting there taking up space. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because what good are they if they stay on the shelf? Right. Yeah. I mean, I I enjoy, I don't know about you out there, if if you enjoy just looking at cookbooks, just reading them. Oh, I enjoy absolutely. just reading cookbooks. But I'm telling you, I do have a habit of reading cookbooks, putting them back on the shelf, and then never making anything out of that cookbook. Yeah, so you shouldn't do we're that. we're putting an end to that. We're putting it in very effectively. Yeah. Go you. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> so tune in next week when we'll have another, it'll be uh, recipe number seven. Yes, yep. it will be. All right, there are some other things I wanted to talk about, so let's stop yammering on about our recipes. Um, I wanted to talk about this article that Veg News put out. It's uh, They call it their vegan cheese guide. And they list, I think, 15 different uh, brands of vegan cheese. And um, do you have the article up in front of you? I do have the article up in front of me. Do you want to talk about each of the cheeses? Well, I don't know if we need to talk about each of the cheeses just because, first of all, we haven't tried all 15. No, we haven't. 
No. You maybe not... want to pull out some uh, highlights out of them? Oh, totally. We can absolutely pull out some highlights. So this is Veg News's guide to the 15 best vegan cheese brands. Uh-huh. Um, now, I'm immediately going to um, contradict Veg News because... <laughs> <laughs> Because my Veggie favorite, news, you got it wrong. Yeah, because my favorite vegan cheese wasn't on there. <laughs> Although my favorite vegan cheese comes from a uh, a small boutique operation called the Uncreamery. Yeah, and they make the best Havarti dill. Yeah, yeah. Imaginable. I mean, you have to cut Veg News a break. They can't include every small no, art- artisanal not. vegan cheesemaker. <laughs> no, of course not. And that wouldn't be expected. So you know, but I'm still going to say, hey, Veg News. You missed one. And um, we can go on to... So what you get in this list is really, in a way, the usual suspects. Some of the usual suspects, yes. Yeah, a lot of the usual suspects. So the 15 best vegan cheese brands, um, at number one, they had Chow. I like Chow. I Um, like Chow, too. I had Chow on my sandwich today. Yeah, it's a good neutral... Uh, it's a good neutral sandwich cheese. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. It's a really mild flavor, but it doesn't disappear into the sandwich. Yeah. I've, I've noticed some vegan cheeses, like... You don't even really need them because you don't, really you don't them you can't, can't tell they're there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you can taste the chow. And so yeah, I Yeah, there's enough of a little that. bit of a cheesy funk from it that you know you, you have cheese on your sandwich. Absolutely. So yes, it's a, it's a good sandwich cheese. Uh, yeah. Number two, they have uh, Follow Your Heart. We use quite a bit of Follow Your Heart in terms of uh, Parmesan and crumbles. Yeah, I love their Parmesans, uh, both the like the shaker mm-hmm. Parmesan yep. and they do like a shredded Parmesan. Yeah, that it's also very good and very par- it's very convincing. It's a very convincing Parmesan flavor. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's lovely. We put it on pasta all the time, all the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like most vegan vegan cheeses is pricey. Yes. Like you get this little container for like six or seven dollars. So it's not on our shopping list every time we shop for sure. But I like to have it for when we make, you know, Italian dishes and stuff. Absolutely. And speaking of cheeses, we like to have on hand when we're making Italian dishes, yeah. uh, we go to number three, which is Kite Hill. Their ricotta is not to be beat. No, we... It is so good. Yeah, we um, tried that for the first time, I think, at Christmas. Yeah. When we bought it because your brother was making um, a lasagna. In, he made like a crockpot lasagna. Like a, a vegan crockpot lasagna. And he wanted lasagna. to veganize it. So we went out and we bought some stuff. And I'm like, oh, look, Kite Hill has a ricotta. Um, it's amazing. It, it's pretty good. Mind you, again, I'm going to say it's cost prohibitive. <laughs> Yes. It was like $8 for this little container of ricotta. Yes, I agree. It's not yeah. something that you're going to be buying every day. But for no. something like a Christmas lasagna, it's completely yeah. acceptable. And we it splurged is, because it was Christmas. That's right. And it was really fantastic. I think Christine's downplaying it a little bit. But then again... No, I was eating it out of the container with a spoon. Oh, well, Because I got go. two containers, remember? <laughs> yes. And then, <laughs> and then I think at one point I had it on the table with some crackers. And I was eating it on crackers. It, it was that good. Yeah. So there you yeah. go. And Christine is more of a, a ricotta fan than I am. Yeah. For me, ricotta should kind of be reserved for things like a lasagna or a calzone or something like that. Yeah. But she loves ricotta. So, well, you're Irish. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. And you're Italian. So it's in your blood. What do you want? All right. So, Got yes. Got to have the ricotta. Um, yes. So then we come across a couple of brands that I have not come across, um, in our quest for great vegan cheese. Right. And so we can't tell you anything about them specifically, but, uh, (laughs) at number four, I know, well, (laughs) if I can't speak from experience. No. Yeah. I'm not going to BS. Yeah. What was number four? Okay. Number four is a company called Loca. Yeah, we've never tried that. And um, specifically what the Veg News article talks about is their queso. It says that they wouldn't be surprised if they found this crave-worthy vegan queso in stadiums one day. So it's thick, salty, and spicy. Um, It's made with potatoes, carrots, jalapenos, nutritional yeast, and spices. And so they highly recommend it for uh, drowning tortilla chips in it. 
Sounds good. Yeah. We haven't actually made a vegan nachos. Um, no, I have made vegan nacho cheese. Um, if you're wondering what the recipe is, I use the recipe from Sarah's Vegan Kitchen at Sarah's Vegan Kitchen's blog online. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great recipe. She uses potato and carrots. And so it's also healthy. Yeah. Um, it's potato and carrot. It is nut based. It's a cashew based, Mm -hmm. uh, nacho cheese, but, uh, it's pretty convincing and we've, but I've never used it on nachos. No, we we have, we have yet to make nachos. There are a few things that we have not actually fully veganized yet. We haven't done nachos. We haven't done quesadillas. We haven't done... Um, I think I've made quesadillas. Have we done quesadillas? Yeah, I think so. Well, then we don't do quesadillas often enough. Because, you know, <laughs> I love me a quesadilla. Coming next week, I'll be looking for a quesadilla <laughs> recipe in one of our cookbooks. Quesadillas are awesome. Okay. Anyway, so that was number four. Um, number five is Misha's Kind Foods. This is another one that um, I am not familiar with. Um, yeah, me neither. And this might these might be West Coast cheeses because the author of this article is a West Coaster. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. But they do a variety of spreadable cheeses um, and they have some really interesting looking flavors, um, caper infused lox and umami laden black truffle. Wow. Yeah, right? Kind of crazy. Um, yeah. Other thing, you know, it's always great. They are a smaller business, and um, this is a black-owned brand as well. So that's always good to know. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, number six is we get, you know, the the Empress of Cheese herself, uh, Miyoko's Creamery. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, you know, Miyoko isn't just about the cheese. She's also the best vegan butter out there yeah and and she uh, has a uh, farm sanctuary she has a farm sanctuary she walks the walk not just talk the talk absolutely and her products are all really pretty good they are i haven't met a miyoko's product that i i haven't liked yeah i mean some of them are a little um odd like i've had a couple of miyoko's cheeses that are they're some of them because they're cultured. Mm-hmm. Some of them have kind of a odd tang that you don't usually find in cheese, <laughs> you know, at least in dairy cheese. Uh-huh. So I think sometimes um, either new vegans or non vegans might be like, mm, I'm not so sure not about so this. sure about that. But I, but I like them. Don't get right. me wrong. Yeah, right. but some of them have kind of an odd tang, mm-hmm. and that's just the culturing. I'm, I'm assuming. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, I know we definitely do. Um, Miyoko shreds quite frequently. We do um, the cream cheese pretty frequently. Yeah. Um, And we love Miyoko's butter. The Miyoko's butter is the next best thing to real butter. Yes. Taste-wise. Yes, absolutely. Um, In the seventh spot, we have So Delicious. Have we tried the So Delicious cheeses? We have. I feel like we've done, um, we've definitely done shreds from So Delicious. Yeah. I just, I guess my, I wasn't impressed by them or anything because they, they're not sticking out in my mind at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But at seven, <laughs> it's so delicious. Um, yeah. They're, I mean, they are a, a huge company and... It's a big brand. It's a very big brand. Um, and they have tons of products. So Delicious also makes one of my favorite vegan ice creams. Yeah, they do make some really good dairy-free ice cream. Their salted caramel dairy-free ice cream is yeah. quite fantastic. And I, they make them from a variety of um, milks, cashew, almond, and coconut. So um, mm-hmm. I really enjoy that. So I can definitely re- recommend So Delicious on the ice cream side of things. Yeah. Um, not as familiar on the cheese side. Um, I think... Th- we, I think they're not as readily available to us um, in the stores near us. So yeah. that's probably why we don't have them as often as some people might. Right. Okay. At number eight is another uh, brand that I am not familiar with. It's an artisan cheese. Um, and the article admits that they are not cheap. And uh, the name of the brand is Shrimu. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes, that's S-R-I-M-U. And uh, they're touting this as a special occasion cheese. Right. That means it's more than $15. That means it's expensive. (laughs) Yes. Um, But they're talking about um, 
cheeses that are just incredibly distinctive, like a vegan blue cheese, a truffle infused camembert. Yeah. Um, you know, the really, truly special stuff. This is not something you want to put on a sandwich no, or in this... a burrito. This is what you're going to put out on a cheese plate. Fancy cheese board. Fancy cheese board. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, we have not had the pleasure of trying these. No. We'll work on that. Um, next is one of my favorites, Violife. Violife, uh, their cheese is, is really meltable, I've found. Most mm-hmm. of their cheeses have a good meltability. And um, I think they're just a good all-around. Their shreds are good all around. The slices are good. And their cheddar slices especially their cheddar slices. are good. Like if you're doing like a, a veggie burger or something, yeah, they, they melt really well. Yeah. I yeah. do. I, I love Violife cheeses. Yeah. So rock on Violife. <laughs> rock on. Rock on Violife. Yes. Uh, let's see. Then we have probably uh, perhaps the most well-known of the vegan cheese companies. Really? Who's that? Daya. Oh, yeah. Daya. Yeah. Daya is kind of like one of the one of the first ones out there. I think. Yes. Uh, They were founded in 2008. Yeah. Um, So there's certainly vegan cheese that has existed before, but they were probably the first mass market available, perhaps, vegan cheese. And unfortunately, I think the the original recipe, Daya cheese, is the cheese that makes everybody think that vegan cheese is bad. Because... (laughs) Right. But the thing is, Daya's stepped up their game. Oh, they've changed their recipes a number of times over the years, and I think they've finally hit on... They, they've hit on it now. Yes. And yeah. so in addition to, you know, their standard offerings of slices and shreds and all of that good stuff, they have a new collection called the Cutting Board Collection. And uh, per Veg News, it is a step above in both taste and texture. I so haven't seen those in the store. I haven't either. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Um, if it's brand new, it just may not have gotten to us yet. Yeah. Um, but with Daya, it used to be, even when we first went vegan, uh, it has that Daya flavor. Mm-hmm. There, there was a specific Daya flavor. And their cheeses don't have that flavor anymore, whatever it was that they were using, whatever it was in the formula that gave it that distinctive Daya vegan cheese flavor. Right. Um, they, yeah, with the new formulas, um, it's, it's not that anymore. Right. Much, they're much better. Both in flavor and in melting and all that. Mm -hmm. Much better product. Yes. Um, So, yes, at number 11, we have Trader Joe's. They have introduced their own range of vegan cheeses, but uh, along with their uh, their specific slices and shreds, they also have... um, Vegan Boursin, which we talked about in a previous episode because yes. you were so excited to yeah. find that. They're not the only ones that carry that. You can find that in other grocery stores. Um, but I think Trader Joe's was one of the first places that... It was the first place you saw it yeah. and you got so excited. It's, I mean, it's good stuff. If you've tried it, it's fantastic. Yeah. Trader Joe's also sells Miyoko's. So between yeah. their own brand, Miyoko's, and the Boursin, you can pretty much meet your vegan cheese needs at Trader Joe's. <laughs> you can. Yeah. All right. Next at number 12 is another uh, brand that is unfamiliar to me, and that's Parmella Creamery. Uh, so let's see. Parmella is primarily a cashew-based cheese, and they make cultured cheeses. Um, they, as with most cheese companies, are doing both slices and shreds. Um and I got to say, per the picture in the article, they look good. Yeah, I've never heard of that brand. I've never tried it. So. Again, it could be a West Coast yeah. thing that just has not made it out here. Could be. All right. At number 13, we have Good Planet. Um, good Planet is another one that I am not entire. I'm not familiar with. Uh, we I have seen Good Planet. Oh, really? I have not purchased Good Planet because it seems like any place that carries... Good Planet also has other brands that I'm familiar with and know ah. that I like, so I don't buy them. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm pretty sure Wegmans carries some Good Planet stuff. Oh, okay. And I may have bought something that was Good Planet and didn't like it. I have so, no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. 
Um, but they also do dairy free slices and shreds. And now uh, they also do wedges that are kind of reminiscent of Baby Bell. Oh, yeah. Bell Cheese is also now making a vegan version of their Baby Bell. Uh, we haven't tried that yet, but Ooh, yeah. But we must as soon as we can because yeah. I love Baby Bell. I think Bells. the vegan grocery store was carrying them. Ooh, we have to get some of those. Yeah. Um, but the thing about Good Planet is that all of their products are soy free. So right. if soy is something that you are avoiding, um, Good Planet would be a good option for you. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, let's see. Number 14, we have Forager. Okay, yep, so Forager has been around for quite some time. Um, and they do um, largely queso fresco. Right. I've never seen the queso fresco. The queso fresco is like, it looks like it's a bag of shreds, but it's really like these little pellets and you're supposed to melt them down. Yes. Um, I haven't seen them in the store, but I would like to try that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, we have, um, uh, not here, but in uh, the next town um, west of us where I grew up, Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm Mm-hmm. There's uh, restaurants called Moe's. If you're familiar with Moe's, it's uh, kind of a fast Mexican place. Yeah, it's a it's, similar idea to a, a Chipotle or yeah. a Codoba or something yeah. like that. But yeah. better. It, but their better. Food, their food's pretty good. Okay. But another thing that they do that everybody goes crazy for is the queso they make. Mm-hmm. It's a dairy queso, don't get me wrong. But um, we used to order it at work and I would just get, you know, they had lots of really great vegan options. But mm-hmm. if somebody got their order messed up and they didn't get their bucket o queso <laughs> there was like <laughs> hell to be paid <laughs> where's my queso i didn't get my queso yeah apparently it was good i never tried it because of course like i said it's dairy cheese but right but i would love to try that the forager brand yeah we will have to track it down yeah without a doubt because you know i'd be i'd be up for making some homemade queso yeah 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 All right. And then the last one we have, and this is another one that I am not familiar with, um, but this is Treeline. And they do a range of styles of cheese from French style soft cheeses to slices and shreds and wheels and all kinds of things. Veg News is recommending them as a a good option for, again, kind of the cheese board type of, yeah. of serving. I've heard of this brand. I think I've seen advertising for this brand, but yeah, I, like you, have never tried it. So Yeah. So we have a few cheeses to track down and <laughs> and find and... Yeah, we got to go on a cheese hunt. Cheese hunt. <laughs> who wasn't... Who wouldn't want to go on a cheese hunt? Cheese hunt. That sounds like fun. Road trip. Yeah. A uh, cheese hunt road trip. We haven't done a road trip in a while. I know. Um, winter kind of puts the kibosh to that. Well, I mean, the holidays. Winter, the holidays... Um, school starting. You went back to work, and yeah, yeah it's uh, so yeah. yeah. We got to get on the road again. We do. We have to get back on the road. Yeah. I One just can't days. wait to get on the road again. The life I love is looking for vegan, vegan cheeses, cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> with my friends, friends, and I can't wait to get back to get on the, get road, on the road again. again. Uh, sorry for that no she's Um, not one thing i really liked about this article about the vegan cheeses is that it wasn't just a fluff piece listing a bunch of vegan cheeses no they actually did a wonderful job at the very beginning of the article touting the reasons that we should be consuming alternative cheeses instead of traditional dairy cheese yeah um how dairy cheese is problematic not only in an ethical sense, but in an environmental sense, in a nutritional sense. Um, It did a really good job of breaking those issues down and explaining why dairy is actually harmful to humans. Yeah, harmful to humans, harmful to the animals, harmful to the environment. I wrote down a couple of bullet points from that um, paragraph in the article. Bullet away. (laughs) Uh, 10 million cows that are impregnated repeatedly and have have their babies taken from them. Good reason not to eat dairy cheese. Yes. The environmental impact of dairy farming. Good reason not to eat dairy cheese. Yes. Cow's milk has 15 different sex hormones that are linked to many hormone-dependent cancers, such as breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and prostate cancer, and also trigger 
excessive cell growth that can contribute to those cancers. Yes. Good reason not to eat dairy cheese. Very good reason. They contain harmful fats and contribute to cardiovascular disease, among other things. Yes. There's a good reason. Uh, Eating four ounces of dairy cheese is equal to the carbon emissions of driving 3.5 miles. Hmm. Yeah. I could eat four ounces when I was eating cheese, dairy cheese. Oh, my gosh. I could eat four ounces of dairy cheese in like 10 minutes. Oh, less than. (laughs) Right? Less than. You could inhale a block of cheese like nobody I've ever seen. (laughs) That's not a pretty visual. Me inhaling a block of cheese. No, it's not a pretty visual, but you know what I mean. I don't mean literal inhaling. No, but four Um, ounces of dairy cheese equals the same amount. Eating four ounces of dairy cheese creates the same amount of carbon emissions as driving 3.5 miles. It's not, not the that. eating of the cheese that's creating. It's the, you know. It's the, it's it's the production, production of the cheese. Production of the cheese. Yeah. yeah. It's the production of the cheese. Right. And cow's milk is bad, but cow's cheese is worse. Yes. Because of a lot of these reasons. Because it's amplified. Because cheese is, you know coagulated cow's milk. Yes. Um, and 65% of the global population is lactose intolerant. Yes. And do you know why that is? Well, because we're not babies anymore. That's right. We're not babies. Yeah. So our bodies stop making lactase, which yeah. is the enzyme that breaks down lactose um, when we stop breastfeeding. Yeah. Essentially, when we start on solid foods, our body goes, oh, you're not doing that milk thing anymore. Okay. Right. You don't need me anymore. I'm going to I'm going to stop. Right, because I mean, come on. Cow's milk is made for baby cows. Yes. It's got all those growth hormones to turn a 100-pound calf into an 1100-pound cow, cow in a year. Yeah, in in a year or less. Yes. So, I mean, why would you want to be drinking all those growth hormones and it's just it's just weird to me. Yeah. And the fact that we didn't think it was weird is purely conditioning. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yes. And I mean, of the two of us, Kate, Christine may be the cheese fiend, but I was definitely the milk drinker. Yeah, you drank milk. Of the family. Um, And so that was actually one of the things that I thought it was going to be hard to give up as a vegan um, because I, I did thoroughly enjoy skim milk and drank it almost every day i would say yeah you would have a little glass of milk a little glass of milk every day um and so um i haven't missed it at all by the way for those of you out there and the the article but i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you oh the article doesn't even hit on or does it not at least this article doesn't hit on um the amount of pus that is allowable oh yes yeah, is that in another article by Veg News? Is that the milk? there are a, there are a number of articles out there about pus? Yeah, that cheese is essentially co- not coagulated cow's milk, but coagulated cow's pus. <laughs> well, yeah, because cow's milk has, uh, you know, according to laws of mm-hmm. the FDA and uh, a lot of agricultural laws, they're allowed a certain percentage of pus yes. per, you know. Per ounce of milk. Yeah. Now, if you ask me, just the idea of consuming pus, I'm sorry. It's disgusting. It really just kind of grosses me out. Yeah. It's really disgusting. Yeah. So, um... So these are just some of the reasons why you should not be consuming dairy. Um, My main reason for not consuming dairy is because it's just so horrific what happens to those poor... cows. Poor mothers. They're mothers. mothers, You know? They're mothers, and they have their babies taken away from them. Within 48 hours, they don't get to bond with their babies. Right. The babies are crying. The mothers are crying. And all of that milk is made, processed, under that duress. Mm-hmm. It's grief. It's liquid grief is what you're drinking. Uh, you yeah. Know? No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And so, of course, the babies also, once taken away, they're not getting the nutrition they need because they're given a substandard formula instead of their mother's milk, which is now being stolen and, you know, carted off to humans. Yeah. And um, many of them 
um, if they don't be, if they're not female and they don't become dairy cows themselves, then a lot of them are. Uh, yeah, they become are subject to the the veal. Yeah, industry. they either become veal cows, um, and they're slaughtered. You know, within six months. Yeah, within six months of their lives, or they're disposed of. Yeah, they're shot on spot on the spot if it's not a farm that has a way to uh, monetize them. Right. So, yeah, it's just it's. I mean, people talk about the meat industry. I, I somehow the dairy industry, and maybe it's because I'm a woman hits a little harder for me. I mean, slaughter is bad. Don't get me wrong. Slaughter is definitely bad. But I think it's the it's it's the repetitive impregnation and the babies taken away from them over right. and over and over again. Right. And you have to remember that this is also forced artificial insemination. Yeah. Every single time yeah. a cow is impregnated. Yeah. So it's it's a terrible it's a terrible business. It, it's it just a is. terrible process. Yes. And I, I agree with you. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a, a better or worse meat and dairy. Um, no, I, think I mean, I think it just affects bad. me more emotionally. Emotionally, yeah. It, yeah, and I do think that is partly being female. I yeah, agree. probably. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. Vegan cheeses. Now, we, of course, know that we are preaching to the choir here with um, um, those of you who are listening. Maybe most not. There may be some people listening that aren't solely vegan or that's true um you know maybe don't know really know our deep seated reasons for our veganism and i think it's always good to to share that you yeah, know for sure to share how it makes us feel yeah those things absolutely the industry and and all that so let's move on to a, a lighter note did you know that sometimes fruit is not vegan <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what the hell is going on in the world? <laughs> yeah, see, this one about knocked me over when uh when I opened it. Christine will frequently send me articles in my email that she wants me to read uh in advance of an episode and I opened this and was seriously, I think the words out of my mouth were, "Are you kidding me? Fruit is not vegan?" Fruit is not vegan. Um how well, can this be? Yeah, well it turns out it's not the fruit itself that's the problem. It's two different things. One is the pesticides um that the fruits are treated with um can contain animal products and also um fruits such as oranges that are often waxed uh to bring a shinier uh, patina. Ooh, there's a word. <laughs> nice word. Thank you. Shinier patina yeah. to the... And just to protect them in transit and stuff. Right. Uh, that those those waxes are frequently made from beeswax. So, so yes. And what I think it was... What really struck me about this article... Yeah, I'll link to all these articles in the show notes if you want to read them for yourself. Okay, um, so this was ladbible.com. Right, Lad Bible. Yep, ladbible.com. Shopper shocked to discover oranges are not vegan. You know what? I was pretty shocked myself. <laughs> right? I mean, they, they have shocked in quotes in the title, but I don't... I know. I don't, why is shocked in quotes? shouldn't be in quotes. I would literally be shocked if I found out that my oranges were not vegan. Yeah. Um, and th- what struck me the most about this, though, um, per usual, is that the UK... Uh, this, so this was um, based on... Um, Fruit that was available in um, UK markets, mm-hmm. such as Tesco, Marks and Spencer, Morrison's, and um, some of the fruit were actually labeled as not suitable for vegans. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the UK for their very strict food labeling laws. Yes. One of the many, many reasons that we love the UK. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and... I'd I'd love to shout out to any American fruit producers out there. Start thinking about labeling. Um, um, I I think if they're not forced to by law, it's not going to happen. I'm sure you're right about that. Yeah. But I would like to be, you know, I'm still going to put a plea out there to say, you know, hey, if if you are using, you know, insecticides or fungicides or 
wax products or anything like that that are in fact derived from animals, you know, uh-huh. please let us know so we can boycott you. <laughs> Like, okay, wait, that just sounds ridiculous. We would like to know so we that we will boycott your product. We would love to know so that we cannot product. buy your product. I'm sure they're going to all run out and change their labeling tomorrow. <laughs> Please yeah, tell us what yeah, not to buy. That, that, yeah, that really, it sounded good in my head. Right? It would be, <laughs> yeah, I, there is no incentive for food no, producers to at all. Outside tell of us. ethics. Outside of Again, ethics. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to happen. No, I understand that you're right. And so what do we in the U.S. and other parts of the world who are buying our fruit from producers who are not being, you know, quite so on the up and up as those supplying stores in the U.K.? Yeah. You know, do we cease and desist to buy fruit? No. Um, You should eat fruit. Try to buy organic. And uh, I guess don't make yourself crazy over it because there's no way to know. Right. I mean, you can't make yourself crazy over everything. Yeah. And you also, like, I mean, come on. We're almost to fruit season. Yeah. Um, I'm getting really excited for fruit Try to buy season. local and try to buy organic. That's all I can yeah. tell you. Yeah. So yeah. I will follow that advice. And then, I mean, um, with oranges and stuff like that, you're not eating the peel. Right. Uh, so try to tell yourself, okay, there may be beeswax on the outside of my orange to protect it and keep it shiny. But I'm not consuming it. I may have purchased it. Right. But I'm not consuming it. And it it. it really does come down to the same thing because... Yeah. I mean, but but like I said, it can't be... It's not going to be a hill you're going to die on because you will die from scabies or scurvy or something from not eating (laughs) fruit. (laughs) Scabies or scurvy. Right? Don't you get scurvy from lack of vitamin C? Lack of vitamin C, but you get vitamin C from many, many sources, not just fruit. I know. I was just trying to make a joke. I know you were. It didn't work. (laughs) Hey, they can't all be winners. No, they can't. They can't. So it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, shout out to the UK for uh, having those strict food labeling laws. Also, they have much stricter food ingredient laws. Yes. Uh, That's why junk food in the UK is so tastes so good. (laughs) Especially if you're a little older, like some of us who shall remain remain nameless, me. And you can remember how things tasted when you were a kid before they started putting all these terrible, terrible chemicals in our food. Yeah. Well, you can buy a thing of cookies, like Oreos or something in the UK, and they taste like they used to taste They're when you a were a kid. They're a thousand times better than anything because, you can get here. Because half of the things they put in our food here in the United States are, are illegal. illegal in the UK. Yeah. So, so once again, props to the UK. Yeah. Put that on your plate. Oh, jeez. Really? <laughs> Has many of you out there watched um, Mrs. Maisel? The Marvelous Mrs. The Mar- Maisel. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's such a good show. It's on um, Hulu? No, no Amazon. It's, Amazon it's on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Such a good show, and they're in their new season. So that's what one of the characters, that's her tagline. She's a comedian. Yes. Put that on your plate. Yes. Yeah. So do you have anything else um, now that we've brought every- everybody down by telling them their fruit is not vegan? <laughs> well i don't know i would like to highlight okay so yeah milk is evil fruit is no longer vegan to sum up but guess what i taught a class today yeah without a mask yeah the mask mandates have been lifted amazing it was just the coolest experience and something that obviously for years and years and years and years and years of my life i took entirely for granted right but today walking in to the studio space and seeing my students faces for the first time during the semester and outside of a few students that i had had in class before COVID even started like the newer students the the first years and the sophomores Mm -hmm. I'd never seen their full faces before yeah. in person. And it was just the most amazing thing. That I'm is like, amazing. Oh, my God. Um, look at all of these beautiful people. <laughs> did any of them express any sort of trepidation about no longer wearing the masks? No, they really didn't. It was just like, yeah, we're done. They they yeah. were all very enthusiastic um, to be done with their masks. I did have one student choose to wear a mask in class. Okay. Um, because it's all optional right now. And I initially wore my mask at the beginning of class because right. I just wanted to wait and see 
I'm I'm comfortable going without a mask in class. Okay. But for example, if I went to a grocery store or something in public spaces, I would definitely still wear right. my mask. I, I mean, at least you know you you are all it's These mandated are, that you're all vaccinated and, and that you're we're all test, you're tested and we're and we're uh, tested recently. frequently. Yes. So and um, also just that these are people that I've been spending a good amount of time around right. for already, you know, the last two months. Right. You know, so in that kind of situation, I feel OK not wearing a mask. I just wanted to make sure the students were comfortable um, before actually taking my mask off. Um, but they were all completely on board with not being masked. But just to be able to see them like smile and laugh and like yeah, just that w- must was, have been really cool oh it was amazing it was amazing so i i would definitely say that even though milk is evil and fruit is no longer <laughs> vegan there are bright spots in the world <laughs> and that was my bright spot today yeah it's always good to find a bright spot in your yeah. day yeah. yeah there's lots of there's lots of them if we just look yeah yeah it's um you know with all the craziness going on in the world the uh, russian invasion of the ukraine and God, everything else with COVID and Hong Kong now is yeah. on lockdown and yeah. um, because of COVID. And uh, yeah, try and find some bright spots and something, at least one thing every day that you're grateful for. It goes a long way, I think. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this thing up. On a positive I'm gonna, note. I'm going to put this. Yeah. Now that we're talking on a positive note, I'm going to put a bow on this baby and wrap it up. All right. We'll go for it. Okay. Uh, email me all of your sushi dip ideas to compassion and cucumbers at gmail.com. Also, don't forget, we are still holding our fundraiser for Mockingbird Farms Animal Sanctuary at buy me a coffee backslash cucumbers. That's buy me a coffee.com backslash cucumbers. And if you have not seen the videos of their newest resident, Cece, Cece, who is now home from the hospital, the little girl calf. Oh my gosh. She is amazing. If you yeah. have not seen her, please go to YouTube and look up Mockingbird Farm Sanctuary and track her down oh my god she is a walking eyelash she is a walking eyelash she <laughs> beautiful is beautiful eyes beautiful um yeah and 27 days she spent in cornell animal hospital that's a really hefty veterinary bill yes. um so they can use all the donations they can get so um donate to them directly or go to our fundraiser um, they appreciate every dollar. No, Absolutely. no donation is too small. But and if you donate fifty dollars through our fundraiser, we will match it. We'll match it, and, and you will get a limited edition T-shirt. Of what? A limit? Yes, a limited edition Compassion and Cucumbers T-shirt. Cool, cool, and and yes, and <laughs> oh, uh, you'll also <laughs> no, get and, a, f- a, free no, a free audio copy. book. <laughs> Wait, do you want me to say it? You say it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, a free copy of the audiobook of Confessions of an Animal Rights Terrorist by Karen Levinson, which was narrated by yours truly. Yay. Yay. Yeah. So that's good incentive. Um, but I think if you check out those videos a little CC, that'll be all the incentive that you need. It really will be because she is phenomenal. Yeah. She's adorable. And uh, yeah. Thank you to them for all they're doing for the animals. Um, what else? Anything else? Anything else? Any other housekeeping that we need? Um, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and uh, click that download button so that these episodes go into your pocket automatically. You don't even have to think about it. We'll just be there every Tuesday. Every, <laughs> Tuesday, every Tuesday morning, you'll be like, ooh, there they are. In my pocket. I have to listen to them now. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure that's it. (laughs) No, thank you, everybody, so much for listening and for all your support. We will see you next week. Um, And hopefully I will get some feedback from you guys because I really want those sushi sauces. I mean, it may have sounded like I was joking about the sushi sauces. First of all, try and say sushi sauces. I I was just going to say, how many times times are you going to say sushi sauce? Because that's impressive. You know what? Yeah. I wish you could... Sushi sauce. I wish you could drop me a voicemail saying sushi sauce three times fast and then give me your favorite sushi sauce 
recipe. The more I say it, the harder it is for me yeah, to say. But, you know, we do not yet have a Compassion and Cucumbers dedicated <laughs> line. So we'll work we don't, on that. We're going to work on that because I really would love for people to be able to just drop us a voicemail about like an idea because I think that'd be really fun. It would be fun. Yeah. Totally fun. Because I want to I want to hear your voices. Yeah. yeah. You hear enough of us. So we yeah. should hear you too. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Thanks again so much for listening and for all your support. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it. 